Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Zachariah Champ, and I'm a part of the University of Texas at Dallas Computer Science RU program. So the topic that I decided to research was about SQL injection attacks and the detection, identification, and prevention of them using machine learning. So my research goals were had three main components. The first was to understand the core parts of SQL injection attacks. The second was to explore some of the main counters to SQL injection attacks. And the third is to create a new sort of model to detect, identify, and prevent them. So what exactly is an SQL injection attack? Uh, basically, it's a sort of cyber attack where a hacker tries to interfere with the queries a website or application makes to its database. And they do this by sort of inserting or injecting malicious SQL codes into input fields like uh, a search box or a login form on the website. So this is how a normal login would work, where you would just uh, typically input your username and password, and uh, it would go about uh, um, easily and simple as that. Uh, and it would just be a matter of, is this a uh, combination um, the same as uh, another one from our uh, user database. If it is, then it gets accepted. And if uh, not, then uh, access is denied. But uh, uh, with an SQL injection attack, or the, as you could see, it basically, or by adding in the um, uh, hyphen or mark, you're basically ending the um, character early or so and basically using an or statement with that you can or basically create a boolean where that's always true and uh, because uh, uh, the way that uh, um, the login works uh, it's basically just searching for a tr it needs a true a true statement in order to gain access so doing a, so this is why sql attacks injection attacks uh, can be pretty problematic there are uh, three major reasons behind SQL injection attacks, with those being data theft, system manipulation, and privilege escalation. Data theft is basically, as the name implies, just uh, stealing the sensitive information from the database. And uh, this could result in identity theft, financial loss, and privacy breaches. System manipulation is about altering, deleting, or inserting data into the database. Uh, uh, which results in the data integrity being compromised, which could lead to potential financial losses, operational disruptions, and loss of trust. And uh, privilege escalation just gain, or allows the or attacker to gain higher level access to the database or the underlying system, which, uh, or, which uh, leads to an increased control over the system for the hacker, which can allow for even more um, exploitation and damage. Moving on to the second part of my research, which was about um, or exploring the main counters uh, for SQL injection attacks. Some of the main ones that I found were input validation and sanitization, uh, parameterized queries and prepared statements, uh, static and dynamic analysis, and uh, the least privilege principle. So the main way that uh, input validation and sanitation were, or like some of the main parts about it uh, include whitelist and blacklist validation with whitelist being about um, only accepting certain um, or safe character characters while blacklist validation um, are, is about it only or about excluding specific dangerous characters. Um, there's also gray list validation, which uh, acts uh, sort of as a cross between both of them. Uh, there's also length checks, which is basically indicating that if there if a certain um, input is either too long or too short, then that means that there's uh, most likely something fishy going on, uh, and uh, or it'll be and the input will be rejected, as well as like the data type validation, which uh, or just make sure that the type or expected data type is the correct one. Like if you're expected to put in 
in an integer, but you put in a string, it's uh, um, validating, it's, uh, or data type validation is there to, um, or to uh, prevent uh, the string from going through. So uh, with parameterized uh, queries and prepared statements, um, with our qu their query template with query templates with the placeholders where instead of concatenating user inputs into the SQL uh, query string, or instead we use placeholders uh, or such as like various uh, special characters like the or like pound or dollar sign or percent or using uh, named parameters to sort of like that or the pair shown or at the bottom part. There's also binding parameters where the actual values provided by the user are specifically bound to those placeholders. And uh, this ensures that the inputs are treated as uh, our data. And uh, then the, or the query template is then sent to the database to be executed in the DBMS or that it executes it with the provided parameters. So um, for static and dynamic analysis, static analysis, it's basically uh, this sort of stuff that's already been done before um, the code gets uh, started. So like manual code review, is pretty self-explanatory where it's just uh, going back over the code. And uh, some of the static code analysis tools are um, Sonar Cube, which detects a wide range of issues, including security vulnerabilities and check marks, which uh, specializes in um, identifying those security flaws. Um, and as well as so the syntax and style checkers, some of them being used are ESLint, PyLint and PMD. Our dynamic uh, uh, dynamic analysis is also known as runtime analysis, and uh, uh, as the name in, or implies, uh, that's what's happening during uh, the code being executed. Uh, there's a fuzz testing, which uh, you could sort of think of it as in, or putting in a bunch of these really wacky, out of nowhere um, inputs, which uh, or just to basically try to confuse or break the machine. Uh, there's also penetration testing uh, or use with uh, stuff like Metasploit and Burp Suite. Um, and basically those are sort of acting as the main ways to prevent or try to get access or through, or through the injection. And uh, uh, the dynamic application security testing which includes a kinetics uh, and app spider with uh, um, the former being a web vulnerability scanner and the latter being a dynamic application security testing tool. And the least privilege principle, um, it's uh, basically the one that's providing um, the minimum amount of uh, are clearance allowed to specifically to do your job where, yeah, like minimum access rights, uh, um, uh, which uh, only assigns permission required for a user or application to perform their job, uh, separation of duties, which divides responsibilities and privileges among different individuals or systems to prevent any single point of failure or um, abuse, basically um, splitting it out so that if uh, one person if one person's login like it gets or gets uh, uh, confiscated by an attacker then it doesn't affect that much um there's the role-based access control or rbac which basically which defines uh, roles based on job functions and assigns permission to these specific roles rather than um, uh, the permissions to the individual user and to the time-based restrictions, which is basically saying that uh, you only get to this specific amount of time in order to, or to complete your task. And that's uh, to ensure like if a, it takes longer than that, then um, the attacker wouldn't, if the potential attacker would 
um, automatically be um, taken out and would uh, be denied access. And so, so for my or so for my proposed method to deal with SQL injection attacks, there are three major components to it. Uh, there's the code overview, um, possible SQL injection attack detection using um, a risk assessment uh, um, or risk assessment measure, as well as the attack prevention. So. What do you think is the biggest reason for SQL attacks um, happening in the first place? Like, what's the main reason that they're even possible? Um, I'll give you a moment to think about it. So, and it's basically just uh, bad programming, which uh, is something that ultimately, um, uh, or it's bound to come up, uh, um, uh, or whenever like you're programming, like you'll eventually just uh, slip up and accidentally write a bit of unsafe code, which could lead to these potential um, or places where programmer or where attackers can exploit. So, or, so the first part of my model will involve uh, or specifically looking for those places where the input validation isn't or present um, alerting the user of the potential flaws and offering to alter the code to include blacklist verification or in case uh, or in those areas where it might be needed. And so the second part is uh, more is uh, focuses more so on a sort of probability value by looking at uh, patterns and similarities between the input and the main inputs used for SQL injection attacks. Um, the machine can produce the likelihood of the input given being an SQL injection attack as a sort of a risk value, where basically the higher the risk value, the um, more likely it is that uh, um, what's being used is an injection, an SQL injection attack. So stuff like um, the hyphen, um, uh, the uh, or the or. Um, a character or um, a semicolon, all of those uh, are pretty commonly used for um, SQL injection attacks, so those have um, pretty high values. And uh, basically, if there's like a Q, if the risk value for the input reaches um, a certain value, uh, let's say um, seven or above, then um, that would mean, or then the input will be denied. So using the risk value shown previously, the machine can then decide to, um, it, how likely it is that the input is an SQL attack and to um, either accept or deny the input based off of that. Um, and my model will also wants to use the least privilege principle in dynamic analysis. Uh, primarily just to make sure that everything goes okay and that there's a, a minimum amount of or chances for the attacker to or commit an SQL injection attack. So this is a very basic um, example of the of my flow or the flow chart of my process where basically we would have the user input and the machine views input and before or and before even uh, put, putting it like as uh, checking to make sure that it's correct or not it'll first uh, uh, look for uh, potential blacklist characters and uh, um, if there is then it automatically determines um, or what the if the risk of value or associate or with the input if it or if it uh, goes over the or amount allowed, then automatically um, the input will be rejected. And otherwise, um, then it'll it will do the standard uh, determining if the input is uh, um, all, if the input is found in the database, and if that boolean returns true, then um, the input is accepted and uh, the user is granted access. And otherwise, the inputs rejected and deny and the access is denied.
And yeah, uh, here are some here are some of my sources. And thank you for watching.